Live from San Francisco, it's The Q. Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hey, Jeff Frick here with The Q. We are on the ground at Pier 48 in San Francisco, California at the Top Coder Open. Open 14, the 14th event. Um, and we're here because really it's about the girls in STEM in high school. And I'm really happy to be joined by the Kind of the uh, what are you, the managing director, the, the yes. brainchild, the girl that put it together. All of those. Awesome, Marion Narusi, whose real job is VP of Outreach to your coders who are here coding, but really took it upon yourself to introduce this new program. So talk a little bit about how you got the idea, how it came about, how you're able to execute it. Absolutely. Um, I am a mom of two daughters. I have a 10-year-old and a 13-year-old. And in addition to that, I'm a woman in technology. I have been in the field for the past 20 years. I have been a programmer. I've done it all. You name it, I've done it. And when I had this opportunity to go ahead and really speak about what it takes, why do we need girls in STEM, much like that passion about what I want to tell my girls to do and be, I, I am the role model for them. I was looking for a way to go ahead and bring the role models in and bring these high school girls who may or may not have their role models to feel as passionate and see that technology is an option for them. And it's a lucrative business. We need them and they need this kind of a career path to be able to be successful. So all of that combined together is really what I saw this was a perfect venue for me to go ahead and have our first inaugural Girls in STEM program. Right, so a little bit about the numbers. How many high schools do you have? How many girls? I noticed you have like a Girl Scout troop. You have yes. a, a really a good variety. Yes, as a matter of fact, we uh, we have 11 uh, high schools and a Girl Scout troop that has been part of this. 200 girls, uh, and we actually had a waiting list. So we had to ask folks to know to accept no more people coming in, primarily because we, we, didn't we didn't know whether we had enough staff to support the girls, but it, there was a lot of interest. We've, have, we've had folks drive in from far away, far away distances, so we're really excited to see this level of enthusiasm uh, in, on, on the venue today. Yeah, and you got Palo Alto High School, so that's good. I have two yes. daughters at Palo Alto, <laughs> that's so that's awesome. good. Uh, the girls from Lincoln seem to be the most vocal. I think we had Very more much questions so. from the girls Amazing Lincoln. Amazing questions. Weren't you amazed by the questions that these girls are asking? To me, incredible to see that you know only think high school girls oh they're still figuring it out they've already figured out I could have closed my eyes and imagine having professional women sitting in and asking the same kind of questions so yeah, well, the, as I comment on the last three to me the best part of the questions was the comfort and kind of the funniness of the question like like the what do you wear to work question to me really shows that they're comfortable and they're curious so that's a real question that's not Absolutely. a complete BS question that Absolutely. somebody told them to ask yeah one of the things that we really wanted to do with this uh, panel was I was was looking for women who are relatable. Um, we have a lot of famous, very successful women in technology, and they are great, but I was looking for more relatable uh, uh, females who could strike that balance with the audience so that they could, the audience sitting in there could imagine, oh, she's really cool, she's funny, but yet smart, I want to be her. Right, right, and, and uh, as we were talking off air from yeah, um, Grace Hopper Celebration of Computing, Maria Clave was very adamant in that, the fact that, you know, men, boys, Mark Zuckerberg, is not a great role model for girls. Not that he's not a great guy and he hasn't built a great company, but girls are looking for, for women. And so to get this nice uh, variety, and their titles weren't too high, I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, Sandberg's great lady, yes. maybe a little intimidating, you know, but That's to get right. just kind of girls in, in, in middle and higher tier uh, positions, I think great call. Exactly. That's, that's exactly the case. I think uh, it, there's only very few women who get to be like a Sheryl Sandberg and that's amazing and we want more of them but at the same time you can be a, a software engineer and be highly successful and passionate in what we do and we want to make it as in a way we want to let the students feel that it could be them they don't have to be a Sheryl Sandberg to be successful you could be a software engineer just like Jeff Arena, right, right. and equally feel that passion and this is just the beginning of what you can in fact achieve right. and I think the other one that came up at the end was the car question right I like yes. cars I'm passionate about cars the fact that that that, that gal had never really equated 
cars with technology when in fact, uh, you know, we do a lot of tech shows. Cars are basically rolling tech platforms. There's more software than there is anything else in a car. So the opportunity to tell them that yes, you can get involved in cars. In fact, one of the panelists, I think said she interned yeah, at, GM. Uh, at GM. So a terrific opportunity. So where do you take it from here? Great inaugural thing, oversubscribed, huge demand. And, 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 and uh, you know, quite frankly, there's a huge demand for these jobs. There aren't enough engineers to fill the jobs. So it seems like a no brainer to get the girls going this way. Absolutely. Much like our CIO, uh, Glenn Weinstein, spoke, uh, I am responsible for a lot of the hirings at Aperio. And uh, uh, to me, this is just the beginning of what we at Aperio will continue to do. Not only we need more women in our own workforce, I think this is an area that we can certainly give back to the community. Aperio does a lot of community work. Girls in STEM is one of those initiatives that we've taken on. Given the response that we've had and given the passion that's there across, you see a lot of appearance here. Uh, I, I feel that the next event, the next top cutter open, expect to see more people, more tracks, and I hope we can even do more than one event throughout the year. That's awesome. So if people want to get involved, they want to contribute, they want to help, what should they do? Oh, well, join the local organizations that are out there. There are many of them. As a matter of fact, I belong to a women in technology group in a DC area. I, I mentor in, in a, uh, girls in technology groups. Uh, there's code.org, uh, Girls Can Code, Black Girl Code. It's amazing. Just all you need to do is just go ahead and uh, Google Girls and Coding. And go ahead and, and all these groups are locally situated. They, do, they have hackathons, they have meetups. Put your name out there. Go meet some of the people who are just like you. And uh, you will find that everyone that you meet are as cool and interesting as passionate as you are. And uh, hopefully that will lead to a technology career. Well, Marian, thank you very much for having us. Congratulations on your first event. Huge success. Uh, really supporting girls who code, high school girls in STEM, trying to keep them on track and showing there's a lot of great opportunities for a career path um, going forward. So I'm Jeff Frick. We're on the ground. Pier 48 at the Top Coder Open 2014. You're watching theCUBE.